my Stitchy friends. Welcome, welcome. Um, I'm glad you're here with me today. My name is Laura. You've found Lalaji Stitches, and this is uh, going to be an episode about cross stitch. I, it's been a month. It's been a, a month and a day. <laughs> I was looking at the calendar yesterday, and yesterday, if I had filmed, it would have been exactly one month since my last video, which is abnormal. Normally, I do my videos, I try to do them about every two weeks. Um, but life happens. It's been a bit of a been a bit of a month. Um, if you're new to my channel, I'm glad you're here. Um, I'll do a little introduction. I don't think I did one with my whip parade um, at the start of the year, so I thought this would probably be a good time, you know, before we get too deep into <laughs> the year, uh, to. Just do a, a brief intro for people who are new. Um, yeah, so my name is Laura. I am a, a cross stitcher. <laughs> I should have thought about this a little bit more before I jumped into it. Um, I guess I don't introduce myself very much. Uh, I am 36 years old. I am a housewife happily a <laughs> housewife. I have been cross-stitching or quilting or doing crafty things since I was a small child. I think my grandma said my first um, like printed cross-stitch I ever did. I was six or something. It was a little sheep, a little lamb that sat in her uh, sewing room as long as I could remember. Apparently I gave it to her after I was done. <laughs> tracks um, uh, so I love I love to create things I I it it's just what I love to do I am a musician I put a piano and the cello I was in choirs in high school and and afterwards actually I was in a couple of community choirs and um, I don't do a lot of that anymore but but I love music and um, I'm a bit of a nerd. I love um, uh, manga and anime and uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, sci-fi, <laughs> fantasy. Uh, so yeah, I, life is supposed to be fun and good. So we find our, we find what brings us joy and we embrace it, right? Um, I have been married for... 12 years this past January and to a wonderful man and he makes my life very happy. Uh, we have no children, uh, which if you go back and watch some of my older videos, I, I touch on a little bit. Um, I have some chronic health issues that contribute to that, uh, infertility and um, yeah, so we won't go into that, but yeah, no kids. So I have my my sweet pupper down here. Her name is Gracie, and I mention her often. She's she's my joy right now and um, my sweet companion. So yeah, that's just a little bit about me. I, anyways, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you found me. I love to do these videos. I've been doing them about a year, almost a year and a half, I guess, and. Um, it was scary getting started, but I I really enjoy this time to share what I'm working on and the interactions I get with um, you guys, my viewers, and um, I have found friends and made some wonderful connections and learned a lot, really, through the Floss Dude community. So I'm, I'm really happy to be here and I'm happy you're here with me. Um, oldies but goodies, I'm glad you're here too still. <laughs> So thank you for joining me. Um, I have a lot to share. It's been a month. I've um, I've had some days where I didn't stitch, but in the days that I did, I tended to stitch a lot. So um, yeah, I did want to say thank you. Sorry, I was reading my notes here and kind of thinking. Um, I did want to say um, thank you. I like, as I mentioned, uh, it's been a, a rough month and, 
and I've got a lot, I've received a lot of messages and comments and my posts. I've been more active on Instagram the last couple weeks um, as a way to kind of keep in touch. But uh, anyways, people have reached out and just sent kind-hearted, tender messages. Um, there was a death in my family and and then I had COVID and, and it was the first time I had COVID through all of 2020. I managed to stay very healthy. I was very cautious and um, I have a weakened immune system so I was extra cautious and and I, I, this is the first time I've gotten it in four years, so <laughs> I, I feel very fortunate to have not had it. Um, but it was brutal. It was, it was not fun. And um, anyway, so people have just been sending messages of wishing me health and comfort and just thank you, truly. Thank you. I appreciate it. I've read everything. I know I haven't responded to a lot of things, but but thank you. Um, okay, let's get into cross-stitch before I <laughs> get all emotional because I tend to, my emotions tend to be very close to the surface right now. So, uh, cross-stitch, lots to see. Oh, I did real quickly have one question I wanted to answer. I've had a lot of requests for um, my quilting videos. I will do one next week. I have also um, had spurts of productivity in my quilting in the last couple of months. So I have a lot to share there too. So this week we'll do cross stitch, next week we'll catch up on quilting, and then hopefully things will catch a rhythm again, and, and we'll just go from there. <laughs> um, so cross stitch, I have, um, yeah, lots to share. Let's start with my little planner. So uh, use this year I'm using a Hobonichi Weeks planner and they are delightful I love the compact size you can see it's it's thin it feels good in your hands I've got a little clear cover over it um, which isn't necessary because for the most part I stay home with this but um, excuse me I still have um, a bit of a cough and some congestion. Oh my gosh, I couldn't hear out of this ear. I had some vertigo because of that <laughs> for like a solid week and a half. Um, anyways, so I've got some lingering. If you hear me sniffling, I apologize. I <laughs> it you just don't bounce back from COVID. I guess in three or four days, it's it's a bit of a lingering engagement, if you will. Um, anyways, Hobonichi Weeks Planner. I've used um, these for my general life planning, you know, appointments, trips, and stuff uh, for several years now, and I love them. And so last year I used the Book of Days, which I really enjoyed. It was the first time I had kind of formally tracked what I was stitching in any kind of calendared way. Um, and I just decided this year that um, I wanted to be able to track a bit more than just what I stitched on. So I have in here, I have, it's predominantly cross stitch, but I also have, I track my quilting. So I've got my quilting goals and I've got cross stitch goals for the year and um, and I've kind of made like a little vision board of things I want to um, work on or finish. And so it's really more of a craft tracker than just strictly cross stitch. So I'm really enjoying it so far. It's a lot more flexible. There's blank pages for planning. And um, for instance, I'm doing the Fabulous House series this year. So I'm tracking as those arrive. Um, so that I know, you know, it's just a fun way to keep track of it. And then uh, for Nashville, I have been, I've, I actually have two lists for Nashville. <laughs> One that is just like all the things I love and then 
one that is the things I've actually purchased because I put I tried to put a limit on <laughs> what I what I acquired from Nashville. I've made my orders. I have one to Lindy Stitches for our pollinator sal, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit more at the end, just as a recap and a, a second invitation to join us. And then, um, well, and I guess this is as good as, as good as any, after I finish showing you what I've done with my planner this month, I'll show you the Nashville um, patterns I've I've settled on because they're, this was a really good market, you guys. It, I know it hasn't even happened yet, but for me, my purchases are done, so it was a good market. Now I just have to wait for them to be in my hot little hand. <laughs> um, okay, so this is my calendar. One thing I love about the weeks is that it has the monthly spread and then it has a weekly spread as well. So I can... I can get that full month kind of overview of what I've done, but then I have space for more details, goals, uh, you know, who I'm watching, if I want to keep track of that. I have more space to write down exactly what I stitched on or if I did some embroidery or wool applique or uh, quilting progress. Um, so I'm enjoying the versatility of this. Anyways, this is my calendar. You can see there were quite a few days. The line means I did no stitching whatsoever. Um, and on the side here, I'm tracking, um, you can also see I had like a, a project list of things I had planned on working on and out of the seven things there, I crossed four of them out cause I just didn't wind up, um, touching those at all this month. I wound up being very comfortable with a handful. I mean, I still touched quite a few projects, but but it stayed a little bit more condensed than I had originally thought it would. So yeah, and then um, you saw, this is some of my January layouts where I was doing a lot of tracking because life happened. It was a bit more utilitarian for the last few weeks. Um, so I just, it was strictly writing down what I did and when I did it. And so it doesn't have to be, it's so much fun to do all the stickers and, um, you know, washi tape. And I printed up here, I printed off. I love, we love uh, Christmas vacation uh, in this house. And so this says me after hanging a single strand of Christmas lights, <laughs> which is, is accurate, an accurate meme there. Like it just, it gave me a giggle. So I printed it off and put it in and, but you don't have to do that. Um, with any planner, no matter what, if you use a, a spiral bound notebook and track your things there, or if you use a fancy pants, um, like, custom planner for cross, specifically designed for cross stitch just remember like simple is okay it's really meant to be useful to you so whatever that means if if you're having a, a fun creative week and you've got the time to put stickers and all that fun stuff on there that's awesome and if you don't that's okay um you do you right <laughs> so that's my planner i i've gotten a lot done so um, let's briefly look at my Nashville things, or should we save that for haul? Maybe we'll save that for haul. Yeah, let's look at, let's look at that in haul, because technically those are acquisitions, so I don't know where to put this. I've got stuff everywhere. <laughs> um, okay, so I have three finishes to share with you. One of them is kind of like a, well, I'll just show you. So I started on New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, right around New Year's. Um, this cute kit, Riola's kit, it's called Forced Calendar. Um, it's really, really sweet. And I had done most of the stitching, but none of the back stitching. I don't have a before picture of this one. Um, that's okay. Anyways, this is where I am. So I finished the first square. Uh, right at the start of the month and that felt really good it's so cute the back stitching 
made it. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's sweet. Um, and then I thought about jumping into the second one, which are these cute little penguins, these lovey-dovey penguins. But then I just wasn't, I just wasn't in a mood for it. I did a couple of other uh, Valentine's Day cross stitches, which I'll show you here because they are also done. And for those first couple weeks of the month. And so I just, I don't know. I just wasn't in the mood to go any farther of it, but I had extra blue when I did this eye. So I came down and added the four. Um, yeah, it's kind of a, a random way to approach this, like partial borders on some of these other blocks. But um, this is just the kit, uh, kit fabric with the kit uh, wool acrylic floss, which I'm loving actually. It's been very interesting. It's plushy and soft and it gives very full coverage. It's quite lovely. Feels kind of like needlepoint. Uh, the finished effect, but really cute. I'm really enjoying it. It's a fun kit and the the designs are just darling. I love the ladybug on top of the hedgehog here. <laughs> That'll be so fun to get down to those. So we'll see. I, I'm not I'm not going to stress about See if I can get my brain to <laughs> creak along here. I'm not going to stress about keeping up with this like monthly. Originally, I I want to say originally that was definitely my intent, but you know, yeah, I'm just not going to. So that's okay. I will bring it back out. Who knows? Maybe I'll the next one I'll jump over to is I'll finish this border and then I'll jump over. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> I'll jump over to this sweet bunny in April or something and and we'll just see how it goes. Um, it's dolling though. I'm really enjoying working on it. Um, so. so that counts as a finish just because it's the full square is done. The next one, I can't show you the pattern because it's, there's no like, it's not a very formal pattern. It comes from this book though, Margaret Sherry Cross Stitch Collection which was released in, oh geez, doesn't tell me a year easily, but I want, I want to say I've had this for at least four or five years, probably picked it up on a Joanne's shelf or something like that, or at Barnes and Noble, maybe. Anyway, really charming designs in it. I stitched the Valentine cat. <clears throat> looks like this on this sweet I think it's a 32 count opalescent white uh, linen that I just bought a scrap of on the other side is another Valentine's and the start of a third and so when this last one is done I'll cut them all apart and fully finish them and I'll have a cute little um, Valentine's Day display which will be fun anyways he turned out so so stinking cute. Let's get him to focus. Um, the back stitching was the magic of this one before he just kind of looked like this blurry blob because <laughs> he's very round. Um, but yeah, the black, the back stitching was the magic sauce. So, so cute. This was really fun. I almost, I pretty much stitched this monogamously for like three days and then it was done. <laughs> it was just delightful. And this, if you're curious, because I since I did show it, it's a Primrose Cottage uh, leaflet stitched up super fast. I did that one last year. So if I keep on par, on pace, I'll do this last square, which is another Primrose Cottage. This is the one with the little birds. They're like two birds, love birds sitting on a branch with like hearts. <laughs> it's cute. Uh, about the same size as this. So um, if I get that done, next year, um, maybe in January or something, then I could fully finish all three of them for a February display. That would be really fun. Um, 
Okay, and the last one, this one was so fun, Big Hearted Tiny Town. I am slowly doing the series. This is my first finish from the series though. I started this series last summer with the Seaside Tiny Town because, oh my gosh, that one is so, so cute. And um, they are releasing a winter tiny town at market that is like, oh. And I just kept telling myself, okay, winter is done. I've been done with winter stitching for a solid <laughs> month at least at this point. Don't buy it yet. It'll still be there when winter comes around again. In the meantime, I've got this one. I have the, um, I don't remember what it's called. It's not the spring tiny town, but it's a springy town, um, which I'll pull out probably sometime next month. Maybe I'll wait till April. We'll just see how it goes. I'm breaking all the rules. I normally stitch themed months, right? At least that's been my thing right now is um, kind of have a theme and then I pull pro projects from my whips uh, based on that theme and stitch that way. And I, and I just totally fell off the bandwagon in <laughs> February. And so it's been kind of a stitch what feels good in, and I mean, I always do that to some extent, but but within the bounds of my themes. Anyways, um, I digress. <laughs> Let me show you my project, because it's done, it's so cute. Um, and I'm using this like notepad because my board that I normally use is <laughs> my temporary frame job for my swans back here. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, there it is. Oh my goodness, I love it. It's so cute. I did not, I had to sub some of my colors. It looks like one, two, three, five of the colors. So like most of the colors. I actually had to sub. A few of them were the call fours, but I just pulled from my stash so that I could do it. Because I had the fabric, I had the pattern. Um, oh my gosh, it's so cute. It's so much fun. I'm gonna finish these flat finishes with magnets on the back so that I can make little displays. Either that or no magnets and I'll just buy like a little easel for them to sit on, like on a mantle or something with other seasonal display items uh, is kind of the vision I have for them. But I love how it turned out. The only thing I was sad about is on this house, this, I actually, this house is the call for colors, but there's supposed to be shutters on either side of this window and the roof line. Those are all the same color and they're supposed to be a different color than the house. And I almost just stitched them in red so that they could be different. Technically, I could still rip them out and sub that if I wanted to. Um, but yeah, it's supposed to really have that contrast and even though I used the call for cherry tomato on that, the dye lot of cherry tomato that I got was not very tomato-y. <laughs> it was very pink, um, which is interesting considering the name, but um, I don't know. It's still cute. In person, you can see a little bit more. It's a little bit peachier than than the body of the house. It shows a little bit more in person. So I kind of just left it. It's still super cute, even being all pink. Um, but anyways, I'm really happy with it. And I've got the, I'll stitch the spring town on the other half of this because I'm doing flat finishes. I don't need a huge margin on them. So um, I'm able to stitch them on closer together than you might otherwise if you were framing them, so. And it looks like my linen is not cut on the grain. <laughs> That's funny. It's totally crooked. Anyways. So yeah, that would be my, my most exciting finish. This was really a delight to stitch. And I'm looking forward to stitching the spring one. That'll be really fun. I also love the... Oops. Um, I love the... There's a honey town, a bee-themed town, and the little patriotic town. I don't think they, they've done a, like a shamrocky 
St. Patrick's Day town, but I really hope she will do that. Um, yeah, I really hope that she will because that would be darling to have little like, like a little leprechaun and a rainbow and four leaf clovers all over the place. Oh my goodness. It'd be darling. <laughs> It'd be really fun. Um, anyways, but I haven't seen one. So if she needs ideas, come to me. <laughs> I'm full of them. Uh, <clears throat> I will say Elizabeth, Erin Air, Elizabeth, who does the cute little tears, I actually almost bought, I finished this and loved it so much, I was looking for another pink and red project um, initially, and, um, and I was this close. Like it was in my cart for a solid three weeks. <laughs> Um, to buy the Erin Elizabeth, uh, Valentine's Day tier. That is so cute. And she just released a St. Patrick's Day tier yesterday. So I'm debating that because that could be really fun. And some of those tiers are really adorable. And I hear that they're really quick, fun stitches. Um, so that could be fun. And my husband and I really enjoy St. Patrick's Day. His grandmother is Irish. And so... Um, we tend to embrace celebrating that. Um, yeah, anyway, so three finishes in February. That's pretty darn good. So far, I've only started one new thing, um, but I will have a second new start next week for Leap Day, which I'll show you at the end in my plans. Okay, so let's dive into my stitching. We'll start with yesterday's start. <clears throat> So this is Moggy Manor, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, my mother is stitching Huckleberry Farm. And when she was getting ready to start that, she was like, you should stitch it too. You have the pattern. And I just didn't have a piece of yardage that was the right color and the right size because it's quite large if you don't have a smaller count. And none of my smaller counts, they just didn't fit the vibe. So I was like, well, I don't really have anything for that, but I think I have like a really nice fabric that would be good for Moggy Manor. What if we just did like a blue flower theme and, and we'll both stitch a blue flower together. So that's what we're doing. It took me a month to start mine. She's already, um, she's already got like so much done on hers. It's beautiful. Uh, so I'm trying to catch up. I started mine yesterday and I'm stitching it on a 14 count Bestitch Me Ada, <clears throat> and the color is mocha. It is so gorgeous. It's not what you would think of when you think mocha. It's not brown. Oh, that's actually showing. Thank you, cloudy skies. <laughs> that's showing really nicely. It's so, so gorgeous. And this is what I did last night. So, um, yeah. The tree is very subtle. It definitely shows. Um, it's very subtle. I think it'll show more once there are darker spots that go into it. And then, of course, there's little birds and critters that sit through the tree. So it will define. It'll show just fine. I'm not worried about it showing. I do need to buy another skein of white lightning, though, because I'm not going to have enough to do the whole arch. In fact, I think I'm almost out just with what I did yesterday. So something to add to my list. But I love it. And I love this Bestitch Me Ada. I can't, I can't recommend it enough. It is so gorgeous. My only concern is that it was not cut on the line. So on the grain. Um, I cut it when I trimmed it down on the line because I have worked in quilt shops most of my life and uh, the first quilt shop I worked at uh, we sold bridal fabric and you do not cut silk <laughs> without pulling a thread and and linens and velvets and you pull threads and so I am that's how I cut my things it is not how she cut hers and I didn't realize that until I was already stitching and I've got a bit of a discrepancy so hopefully I've allowed enough um, I think I've allowed enough edge that it will be okay. 
I think I'll be okay. I'll, sit, I'll still have enough extra to frame. It just might be a little skimpy on that corner. I also am making it, so I cut a piece big enough for my entire design, for the original entire design, but I am actually shortening mine. So I don't have any cats. I love cats. I've had a cat in the past, but um, I think I'm just going to stitch to the grass and bring this spiky border up to just below the grass to frame it in and I'm so I'm pretty much stitching a square and that might play to my favor as we've got this <clears throat> excuse me we've got this narrow narrower bottom I th was looking at it yesterday and I think it will be sh a, less of a cut into it because I will lose I don't need as big as I cut the fabric. I cut it so that I could stitch the whole thing. If I get part way through and I'm like, oh, I'll just stitch it all. <laughs> I could do that. I have the option. Um, but if I continue with kind of my original plan, then you lose a good chunk of that depth. And so maybe my extra fabric will be a little bit more a little bit safer. Let's just say it that way. Anyways, I did see one person on Instagram who had changed these two dogs. She had charted, I think this one was into a beagle or something like that. And that could be really cute if I did decide to do the bottom. I could do like a black lab and a yellow lab, which is what my dogs have been. So, um, so I, I left myself space to change my mind should I want to. Oh, and he lives she lives in this bag, so this is my bag for this one. I make all my own bags and and they vary. I love vinyl front bags. I know some people don't because your patterns, um, the ink will stick to them if they get really hot. But, um, but there are ways to avoid that and I really love being able to look in and see what my projects are. Um, that being said, I haven't had vinyl. <laughs> So I uh, have done a, a number of just full cloth bags, and that's been really fun. The only thing I think I would need is a tag or something on them. So, so there's that little side brain thought. <clears throat> okay, the next one is Bella Filipina, The Mad Tea Party, which I love. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> It's so pretty. I, I bought this the moment I saw it. I ordered it. This is where we were when last we met. I had given it a start, but not done a whole lot. Um, I'm trying to remember, I think this was a 12 by 12 start. I could look at my tag and have real information. <laughs> yeah, actually, I started it the day after Christmas. So I just did a little start on it. Um, but I've made a lot of progress because it's gorgeous and it's really fun. I had a bit of a grew blah blah. There have been a, a number of them. Um, I'm stitching this on 14 Count Ada from Fabrics by Stephanie, and this is called Busy Izzy. It's fabulous. That's where I am. So the grew blah blah that slowed me down for a few days was I had this color is, I, I think it's 912. And then there is a lighter color that, um, 911, basically 911 and 912. Those, I know those were the two colors. And I had stitched this green up in here, la la la, happy as a lark. And then continued on with the banner and when I came down to this green um, I got it all stitched and I went back in to add the secondary light color lighter color and it was the same <laughs> so basically what I had done was I had stitched incorrectly up here I'd used the lighter color um, instead of the darker color and they are when they are stitched they are so difficult to tell apart it is so subtle in fact in this spot right here, both of those colors are in there. Can you tell the difference? <laughs> I mean, I think 
overall you can see that there's a shadowing effect happening there but my goodness they are so close and it took me forever to finally decide that yes I had stitched it wrong I needed to pull it out <laughs> but I had then worked other threads into um, those stitches so I kind of it was kind of uh, delicate work because I had to carefully pull out those and then thread chicken them, weave them back into other places to secure those ends, um, and then continue ripping out. Anyways, it was a bit, a bit delicate, but it was all, it wasn't a ton of stitching. It didn't take that long to do once I finally figured out that, yes, the color was incorrect and I needed to fix it. <laughs> Anyways, I'm loving it. It's fabulous. There are a lot of, um, fractional stitches to create the softness of her arm. But, in fact, and this arm, it looks really funny because it still needs a color. And then there's back stitching. Um, but yeah, she's looking awesome. I'm excited to get, as with all projects, like you add another color and it makes the other colors richer. Um, here's this fabric all out together. It's so cool. <laughs> Perfect for a Wonderland stitch. And Bella Fina, Filipina actually just released uh, Jasmine. So they've done Snow White, Alice, and now Jasmine. And Jasmine is so gorgeous. I might have to jump on that once I get Alice done. I do have her Krynix. I don't have any of her beads yet, but I do have the Krynix now. So I can, this whole arch, the, the, light, the outline of this, the structure, I should say, of this arch is all Krynix. Um, so I do have it now and I can really keep moving on that. She lives in this Alice in Wonderland bag, <laughs> which I love. I'll just tuck her in and plop it down there. <clears throat> so tons of progress on that. I really enjoyed the Ada was good for a distracted brain, um, this month. Okay. Next one is another Alice theme. So my theme for February that I very loosely followed <laughs> was literary February. So it was anything that reminded me of a book I've read, really came from like characters of a book or had books in it. So that was kind of like the inspiration. So Alice in Wonderland. Um, this one is Alice Meets the Caterpillar by Gera Kyoko Maruka. I love her designs and I have another one of hers that you'll see later. Um, but I started this last year and I was, right, I got to here last year when I was stitching on it. So you're starting to see some fun things, but it really was still at its beginning stages. And now, <clears throat> There we go. Oh, it's so cute. So we've really got the structure of the mushroom and the top of the mushroom is complete. This is where her little arm is reaching up towards the caterpillar. And this candy cane looking swirl uh, will have, I think it's blue or something in it. So it's actually more of a, a fern kind of spiral. And it'll be really exciting to get the foliage in around because as I was kind of mentioning with the other Alice, adding more color really makes the other colors richer. So bringing in some of these grays and bringing green back down here, it really kind of grounded the brightness <laughs> of this initial mushroom, but it's darling. This one is fun to stitch. It's a 29 count, which is odd, linen. It's called Crushed Strawberry. Um, so a little pinker than the original design was stitched on, but in keeping with it. So really fun. I thought I would get a lot more done on this, but, um, I guess to be fair to myself, I thought a lot of things <laughs> about this month that didn't come. Um, I have this wiener sausage dog bag. It's a vinyl front and... Um, that's what 
Alice and the Caterpillar live in. So those are my two Alice designs. I have one more whip of Alice, but I didn't pull it out. I actually have two more whips. Uh, the Mad Hatter, she Mad Hatter, um, is actually in that bag, in one of those bags as well. And I didn't stitch on it at all. I don't know if it was because the colors were a bit more grayed out and I just wanted happy colors or if it was I just didn't feel like something I wanted to stitch on right now I don't know whatever the reason was I didn't work on it and then I also once upon a time started the Alice in Wonderland Sal from Satsuma Street and I have that one about 50% done so kind of did half of my Alice cells this month <laughs> or stitches they're not all cells Okay, the next one, you've probably seen this places. There are a lot of people stitching this. The Pink Sparrow Sampler. It's Beautiful by Brenda Gervais. And um, I love it. I think it's really sweet. Um, I am completely changing mine up though. So this is where we started. This is the closest to where we started. I had the green uh, vine border part completed. I'd it had come clear around. And you can see here, I am switching my colors. I'm doing a full conversion um, because when I started pulling the colors, they are very dusty in person. And you can see a bit of that in the photo, but um, they were even dustier than the photo is. So I really wanted this to be a spring stitch, something uh, fresh and light and so I am converting my colors over to kind of fit that idea and I've gotten quite a bit done on this I've enjoyed working on this Ugh. yeah so there I am part of the flowers and the border done um, I had a bit of a debate on whether I wanted these little I don't know peach trees or whatever they're supposed to be to be peach or if I wanted them to be I have this lovely um, golden color that will come down into other places and but it's really only in the border on the bottom these two flowers will be that golden color and so I was like hmm do I want to bring some of that golden color up here but it turns out it will feature in this bird that sits on this branch so I left the trees peachy and I actually really like them one thing I was going for in that choice was, you can see the picture is it's very blendy. Um, and I wanted it to stay. I wanted it to show, but also stay blendy. And if you get up close, I love this purple and peach. It's like lilac and peach. It is so, so pretty. Um, anyways, so the bones of this project are in, and now I get to do all the fun motifs, which is awesome. I, I'm really enjoying it. It's fun. Samplers have felt good this year, this year, this year, this month, both. <laughs> um, I haven't done a lot of sampler stitching in the past, but I am starting to, I'm picky about my samplers, um, to be honest. I don't love every sampler, and I can think a sampler is beautiful without wanting to stitch it for sure. Um, Oh, I forgot to say the color, the fabric. This is a 28 count even weave. It's part of my one of my monthly subscriptions. Oh, actually, this one of my hauls actually should be in this bag. It's my project bag and it's a vinyl front, but that's pattern. So, um, uh, but the fabric, monthly subscription, it is lightly roasted, not salted. <laughs> Kind of a funny name. Um, yeah, but it's beautiful. It's like, you, you can see, it's this beautiful, like, softest apricot color, uh, peachy color. And it's a little bit more, it's a little bit deeper in person than you're seeing in the screen. It's washing out a bit, as so many colors seem to do in camera. But um, it's beautiful. It's really, I'm loving I'm loving it. It feels 
appropriate for the pink sparrow sampler. So that one's been really fun. I don't think that one will go away because I'm enjoying stitching on that. Um, I think I'll continue working on that here and there since we're breaking all the rules, right? <clears throat> okay, the next one is the adventure sampler which I am also doing a full conversion on. It was originally stitched in silks. There is a DMC conversion in the chart. I am further converting it <laughs> to overdyes. Um, I'm stitching this, but I love it. I, I'm, a, I'm a Sasquatch girl. Um, you name a Sasquatch documentary or TV show or whatever, I've probably watched it. <laughs> This is where I, oh, I didn't show you where I was. I had started, this is not a new start. Oh, I had a very exciting start on it. <laughs> it was just the barest of one length of thread. So here is where I am and I adore it. This one was my happy place for a solid three or four days. It just felt good. So I, my berries are a bit more purpley, but it's a beautiful variegated that goes, it's a Cosmo actually. It goes from purple to blue and um, so you get kind of almost a huckleberry feel, which is what I was going for. Um, the designer, Rebecca Murphy from Sambri, Stitch, Sambri Stitches, she um, wrote in the pattern that it was, inspired by her husband and hers time in the Pacific Northwest. So they're all kind of Pacific Northwest motifs. Um, and so huckleberries, I mean, they're very, they grow in the mountains here and they're delicious. Um, so that's kind of what I was going through. They're very, they're blue in the, in the picture. So I went a little bit more purpley blue cause that felt more like berries. Um, and then I made my little hearts Lavender, because I love it. Um, yeah, it's coming right along. This is one of the reasons I'm almost out of white lightning because it was perfect for a thunder cloud, a Pacific Northwest cloud. <laughs> it's delightful. So my border is completely, completely done. Everything's done in it, and now I'm just filling in motifs. So I need to finish my bee skip and there are a couple of little bees around and then I either go to Sasquatch or I go down to um, there's like a black bear and a cot a cabin down here which it may be the way I may like circle around and finish with Sasquatch let it be the last to arrive save the best for last right <laughs> anyway it's been really fun it definitely took some brain power because um, as I said, I'm doing a full conversion. So even though I chose all my colors, I have a, a key that I've made for myself. Um, there's still a bit of, okay, before I actually start stitching, am I sure this is the way I wanna go? Yes, no, blah, 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 you know. So there's still a bit of figuring that happens, oops, that's the back, um, as you're stitching. And then you settle on it and you have to commit and start stitching. <laughs> Uh, but I'm really happy with how it's coming along. I'm stitching this on 28 count linen from Pictures Plus. The color is Fresco and it's one of my favorite neutrals from Picture This Plus. It has very soft blue to green, kind of a pinky tinge to it. I mean, it's, it's gorgeous in person. It's showing pretty well here, but again, they never quite look the way they do in person. And naturally, my Sasquatch sampler lives in a, a Sasquatch bag. <laughs> Where else could it live? <laughs> okay. Uh, the next one is Mojo Stitches in the library. This is actually a casual sal with my friend Julie from Julie and Stitches. I don't know if she's worked on it recently, but I took a huge hiatus from it, so that's okay. <laughs> we stitch what feels good, right? This is where I started. It's one of the most beautiful projects. It does take a little bit of brain power because there's quite a bit of, I mean, it's counting and all of cro counted cross stitch, right? But like this is, it takes a little bit more focus. <laughs> this is where I am. 
I'm stitching it on a vintage Lakeside Needleworks linen, which I have lost the name of. It is not in my bag anywhere to be found. Um, so I have all my floss, my working chart, my pattern, but I have lost, I have lost my information on the linen, which maybe that's okay because I have learned uh, the vintage ones are discontinued and they're hard to get your hands on. So apparently I was oodles and oodles of lucky the day I found this and it's gorgeous. If I could have two yards of this in my stash, I would happily. <laughs> it's so gorgeous. Anyways, I finished that. I finished this whole quadrant of um, border is complete. And I added in a secondary color here. I think there's still one more color of green to go into this ivy border here before it's done. Um, but once that's done, the whole top half is complete. I finished this whole shelf. So I've got one more shelf and half of a border. It's almost there. It's over 50%. And I love it in the library. I'm stitching it with the call for cottage garden threads. This was my first um, dip into the cottage garden thread pond and I'm hooked. I love them. I want them all. <laughs> I have not started collecting them yet because I have a very, um, rudimentary uh well growing but um still rather infantile overdive floss collection um i didn't start using them until well i mean i i don't know i i anyways <laughs> my brain i just like stuttered myself to a stop so anyways i'm i'm working on building i am getting a regular subscription of classic color works um, which is great to be building that collection. And then once I'm done with that, I, maybe I'll jump on to Cottage Garden or maybe I'll do Gentle Art. I don't know. You know, there are a few brands that are called for in uh, the vast majority of patterns, that, but there are so many Overdive Floss companies out there at this point that do beautiful things. Um, I, you want to try them all, but I haven't even, I even haven't, <laughs> I probably know, I can't, probably can't even name half of them that are out there. So, um, anyways, Cottage Garden, they're gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. I definitely recommend them. They have a really nice body to them. So they make really beautiful stitches and the colors are gorgeous. They, they do their dyeing. Well, each one's different. Um, but it's a bit, you know, like Wix Dye Works is very blendy. So you get a really smooth kind of modeled look for most of them, not all of them, but most of them are pretty blendy. Um, Classic Color Works is a little bit more dynamic in their changes. And then I would say Cottage Garden is more dynamic from there. Like there's a bigger, there's a more defined, bridge between the colors um so you get really cool variegation when you stitch with it without it being like rainbow stripes <laughs> if that makes sense um anyways it's fun to work with it's fun to work with you kind of stitch a little funky to get things to lay where you want but that's part of the creative fun with it anyways um uh, my next one is, and I'll show this to you while I find the picture, Letty Stitch into Dreamland. I started her, uh, not last fall, but the fall before, adored her and stitched on her a lot for about six months. And then I kind of let her go for seasonal stitching and stuff like that. Um, but she is stunning. It is completely full coverage. I'm stitching it with the kit supplies on the kit Ada, which is lovely. Um, and when I picked it up again, this is where I was. So I had almost, oh, excuse me. I had almost a page finish, but I was working on softening the page breaks. Um, I have seen on some cross stitches, full coverage, 
pieces, people will do it, stitch it by the page. And sometimes you get a pretty hard line that doesn't seem to go away. And I don't want that in this. So I'm working on, I need to come down into this page so that I can break up that line so that, especially, I think it, it must just be the passage of time. And as you put away a project for a while, those, the stitches kind of settle. And then as you stitch in new ones, they're fresh and fluffy, but I don't know that they don't seem to equalize very well. So you get that line. That's all I can think that would cause that. Um, anyways, so that's what I'm working on doing. Um, my next time I pick it up, I'll probably try to break down into that bottom part, but this is, this is the, the outer corner. I have the full width of the project now. Um, which is pretty exciting. Pretty soon in here, we start getting into her head, the back of her head, where she's kind of looking down at her book. And it's so beautiful. It's so satisfying to stitch full coverage. They're just oodles of satisfying. <laughs> and this linen is very soft, linen, excuse me, Ada is very soft and comfortable to work on. I stitch in hand. I do not use hoops or um, Q-snaps or anything like that. Um, I have in the past. I have hoops. I have a Nurge hoop, which I tried when they were having kind of their popularity heyday last year. I bought one just to see how it was. Those are firm little suckers. Um, but, and I have a scrolling stand. You know, I've tried a number of things. I just really enjoy stitching in hand. And I think that comes from my wool applique and embroidery. I've just, I'm very comfortable with my tension and being able to kind of scrunch up the fabric and get right into where I'm working is, is my comfort zone. So that's how I do it. Um, yeah. Okay, next one is... Flora and Fauna, which is the second Kyoko Maroka, um, Maru, Maroka, yeah, um, design I'm working on right now, and it comes from Cross Stitch Happy Days, which is a book she released last fall. Everything in here is delightful. It's so, so cute, uh, happy, happy colors, and I am working on, that is the chart, we don't want that. Um, it's originally a monthly, they almost, they remind me of seed packets. These cute little, oh, this is probably better. These cute little motifs with the, the month names underneath them. I am stitching all 12, there are 12 of them, and, but I am omitting the names. And my thought is that I will, I'll put that in there. I didn't do a ton on this, honestly. This should have been another finish for this month, but um, I just did some of the second month. So this is a ladybug. <laughs> it will be a ladybug. And then there's a flower bloom up here. There's not much left to do. Um, one evening of stitching should finish this up. But I'm going to stitch them as the squares, and then I'm going to cut them apart and incorporate them into a wall quilt, which I think will be really fun. So that's why I am. This is just a 28 count cream linen. Um, yeah, it's lovely. The holes are really big. It feels bigger than 28 count. I work on a lot of pictures plus, which tends to run on the small side. Um, so this feels very open, loosey goosey, but it really makes for lovely stitches and easy stitching. Uh, there's no mistake in those holes. <laughs> so that is that. Okay, the next one is one I have loved stitching on so far, but it has been a problem child from the beginning. <laughs> the Lord's Prayer by Lila's Studio. So last time we talked, I had been working on the center vine to complete this outer border. Just the circle, none of the flowers really. I had done a few flowers up here and then decided to just 
get that center vine going. And um, I ran into an error right here. So I started in the center, went down, and then I went down and over. And when I got to meet up here, they didn't match. So I had to rip out all of this and then put it back in. And I got it to match, I got it to work. And um, so then I started, I was like, okay, let's get the bones in. That's what I was, apparently that was my comfort zone this month was getting the bones in. So I started on this. Oh my goodness. It's so gorgeous. I am, <clears throat> oh, I'll just show you. This is the only picture I could find was like a starter and you could see it was just those few blooms and then the center, um, well fiddle, the center vine. Um, I'm stitching this on Picture This Plus Highland Linen. It's a 28 count. It's gorgeous. Again, this is one of those warm, If oh, I've got a hanging thread. Well, and that's part of the story because we have another Gru Blah Blah. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I wish I were. <laughs> Problem Child City. So here's where I am. We'll just get it out. I've got my square established and Oh, I'm so close to right here. So what happened? Where did it all go wrong? Well, don't watch Criminal Minds while you're cross-stitching because apparently I went like this instead of like this. <laughs> and um, anyways, error. I missed one set of leaves right here. So you can see on this side there are six and then there's kind of a brink, a brink. <laughs> just make up some words a break and then there's another set of a number and then a break and a set of a number it is irregular be careful on these borders these are not equal the spaces between the leaves are not equal how many sets what direction the flowers I go not equal from one side to another which I love it's one of my things that I don't care for in a lot of samplers is that they are mirror image of each other from one side to the next. So it's like you could stitch half of it and then you're literally stitching the same thing again on the other side. Boring. Even if they're beautiful, it's just like, ugh, I need more variety in my life. So in a way, it's really great that it's not equal or balanced. But in, in another way, it makes for the necessity of attention to detail. <laughs> and I had been warned about this after I'd had this error, um, or this error rather, I um, had been warned that the inner boundaries were equally unbalanced. And so I was actually trying to be very, very careful. And other than missing one entire set of leaves, it's like my eyes just deleted them from the pattern everything is correct. So here's my thought. My first thought was, oh crap, I have to pull it all out. But let's be honest, floss doesn't survive being pulled out very well. And that is almost a full, I mean, it's almost a full skein of floss. So it takes a lot. I'm, I'm stitching on 28 count. So, um, and it's an over dyed. It's not the DMC. Again, this is one that was stitched in silks and then converted into DMC. And I am converting from that to over dyes for most of it. I'm keeping some of the DMC, like the flowers. Those are DMC, at least these ones so far. But I wanted a, a little bit more movement, a little more something, something. So I am using over dyes for my vines and for my letters. Anyways. It's great, it's gorgeous. I love how it looks. I think it's just utterly beautiful, but um, but that's a lot to pull out. That's And it feels like more than just this vine was even because of the leaves. Uh, Cause I stitched them as I went. It was just like a little bit of vine leaf, leaf, vine, leaf, leaf. So everything would have to come out cause everything is in the wrong spot. So here's what I'm thinking. It's close enough, I could probably find a way to fudge. So what I'm going to do, instead of just ripping it out and destroying all of my floss, I'm going to start putting in the letters. I'm gonna start putting in the verse. And um, 
and I am just going to see how it fits. And if it goes in nicely without overcrowding anywhere or um, not fitting, I'm going to leave it and I'm just going to fudge this lower part down here. So this is just going to kind of be like a a lingering hanging thread for a bit while I get that verse in and I'm hopeful that it won't I'm hopeful that we haven't lost a lot of space here I think it's just a couple of stitches and that that verse can still be centered in here nicely and if I can do that then I'm gonna leave it and we'll move forward not backward right um, that's my hope I really hope it works out it would be lame to have to pull all of that out. I mean, it could be worse. It could be the whole circle. But anyways, it's been an, a bit of a timeout for a week or so while I have been vacillating in my brain how to address this error. Anyways, cross my fingers. I think it'll be okay. We'll find out one way or another. <laughs> um, okay, next one was a new start. I guess I should put this in my, this is a second new start. I didn't even realize that. Of course it's a new start. This is the Fabulous House series number three. It is so beautiful. I love, so these lacy little snowflakes have this little green stitching in some of the junction points of it. And it just feels like the perfect, because March, we always think March, spring which eventually it is by the end of the month right but the first you know three weeks of the month <laughs> are technically still winter and i thought this was the loveliest junction between spring and winter where you still might have some cold days here maybe even a flurry or so depending on where you're located but then you also have we have crocuses and cherry blossoms starting to pop here which feels wild but it's that in between where it's still still a little bit wintry, but spring is coming, like the hope of spring. I love this. It's a lovely pattern. I don't know if I am putting way more meaning into this than she intended, but <laughs> here I am. <laughs> um, so I am doing them. A lot of people are stitching these together and it's darling all together. In fact, um, they're in their teaser picture, it's all on one piece on a 40 count. I'm stitching mine separately on 28 counts and I am going to do flat finishes on them um, so that I can buy one frame and just switch them out through the year. So this is my start. I love the lacy white work. It's so satisfying. <laughs> And this is just, I just did this um, a couple nights ago. So it wasn't, it took me a while to start this. In fact, I even wondered if I would start it before, um, before March or something. But um, decided to start it. I had it kitted up and ready to go. So this is uh, Bestitch Me 28 Count Lugana. Uh, the color is Lunar Moth, and it was one of our monthly colors a few months ago, four months ago or so. So I get a monthly fat quarter of Lugana from them, and I love them. So gorgeous. Um, and the green felt, I don't know, a little bit more of a nod towards spring. I'm not doing them all in the same color, obviously. <laughs> this is its project bag little Tula pink. <clears throat> okay, and last but not least is my 100 Owls from Owl Forest Embroidery. I do have, if you haven't seen them before, oh, how do I get out of here? Oh, oh, there we go. Need to find a different album here. Cross stitch main pictures. Here we go. It's gorgeous. It's a free pattern on Al Forest Embroidery's site. 
They do an annual free stitch along, which is amazing. And they don't do, like this is a free stitch along, but they're not doing like boring, super simple, blocky, you know, like these are gorgeous patterns that they do for their stitch alongs. And they just finished the Treasure Island one, which I had intended to work on this month. And then it just never, it just never happened. Um, it was one of those ones that was planned, but kind of got cast aside. So I didn't do my new starts. I had planned either. Um, anyways, but this is Darling. I've wanted to do it for a few years now. And I have all of the patterns. I finally said, this is the year. I'm doing it. I have all of the patterns um, printed off. Uh, just in case they ever should decide to not backlog their... Um, their old sows and but they've got more than their old sows in their free section they have some beautiful beautiful projects I highly recommend going to look at those um, okay so this is where I was I was I haven't done much on it I just started the first center owl and I have finished that well I finished the owl so I'll tell you what is going on here so here it is it's lovely I think she's so pretty <laughs> I just love 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 her um, there are little blooms that are scattered through here but they I don't know if I have the picture convenient um, the the stems so I am converting they have their own uh, over dyed cotton floss that they do their kits in and I don't have any of their flosses so I am using predominantly cottage garden threads with some others from you know like this is a I think it's weeks or general arts terracotta or something like that is the tummy and so I'm I'm, I'm basically I'm converting from my stash of over dyeds to be similar-ish to their original, um, their original project. So I've made some differences. The flowers in the border were just blue and I used a really pretty blue and aqua and purple, which I love. I love kind of the the whimsy of that. So I'm making little adjustments, but if I can zoom in here and it'll show, the green that they use goes a little bit orange, a little bit lime, it's almost a brown orange, and then it has a nice green, and that is the same green that comes up into the second section that sits above this little owl. And I have nothing even similar, and I really like that effect. So I'm being a little picky and slowing down my progress on this because I want, I want that effect. I have found, so when I did my order for Nashville at Top Knot Stitcher, she carries um, cottage garden threads in stock, which I didn't know. That's a very dangerous thing to be aware of. <laughs> and I have ordered, I think it was three or four that could work for this, um, that will just go into my bag with all my supplies. And so I am on hold on this until that order comes sometime, probably mid-March, late March, um, and when I get those, um, those greens so I can play with, because I don't wanna like, it's an easy count up for that center vine, but to come out to these owls, I don't wanna risk them being off. So I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna add in those last ones and then come up with my green once I have it. Yeah. Anyway, I'm loving it. It kinda of kills me. I was really enjoying working on this the other day, so it makes me a little sad to, to stop it for a minute, but, but I think it will be worth it to have floss that really feels right for the project so it's a big project so I want it to be good <laughs> I want it to fit my mental uh whatever's <laughs> my mental whatever's <laughs> um oh this is a picture of this plus linen 
I want to say Valor, but I don't have my information card here actually on that. So I'm not sure. But it'll come out again as soon as I get those floss in March. It'll get more work and I'll be sure to... I'm pretty sure I said it in my last video where I showed what I had done on this, what the actual fabric is. I'm sorry, I don't have that. Um, <clears throat> okay, that's everything I worked on. So I got a lot of stitching done. I mean, stitching has been uh, a comfort zone for me, for sure. So, in fact, I plan on doing that this afternoon after I'm done here. So, <laughs> um, um, but then my husband and I are going on a date, which we haven't done in quite a while, and that will be really fun. I can go out and eat good food and catch up. <laughs> um, okay, so let's do haul. I my one two three stitch order came in. Um, it had a lot of floss in it. But I also got a few patterns. So I got Mojo Stitches Rosella Rests, Ugh. which is gorgeous. And I have, I am working on The Visitor right now. Uh, well, right now, not actively right now. I started it last year. I would like to finish it this year. And when I finish The Visitor, then I will start Rosella Rests. I think they'll be really lovely companion pieces. Uh, really really beautiful really beautiful but lots of floss lots of floss so I need it's a good thing that I'm not done with the visitor yet because it will take a while to pull together <laughs> a large floss list I really love using um, um, so I've seen the visitor done in the DMC conversion it's beautiful it really is beautiful um, but I have been doing mine in the overdyes, and so I would want them to pair well together in that way. And I mean, the overdyes are gorgeous. So, a tribute to summer sampler by Stacy Nash is a very faded picture, but lovely. It's so pretty. I love this rooster over here in the field. He's hilarious. And the little strawberry plant, and I think it's really, really beautiful. And that border is what it's really all about, because that's gorgeous. I mean, we know my luck with borders these days, but, you know, it's not a big one. I can do this. <laughs> I will probably start this um, April or June or something like that. I would say May, but... May is set aside for mirrors. It's a mirror May. So, um, so there will be no, well, in theory, <laughs> there will be no straying outside of the mirrors, hopefully. Um, I fell in love with this. I think it is so sweet. Spring birds. Um, it's so pretty. Those cherry blossoms. Oh, I love it. Um, so those came with my one, two, three stitch order, which was, uh, made possible through, uh, donations to my buy me a coffee. So thank you. Thank you. I know I thanked you guys last time because that was in January, but, um, but it's here and now you've seen it and, and woo, it'll be so fun to start those. Like that's really fun. Um, this was my bestitch me. It's still in plastic. Sorry guys. Um, my bestitch me monthly for... It must have been the start of February. Um, no, this would have been January's. This is January's because February's hasn't come yet. They don't ship out till the end of the month. So, but they come at the start of the month. That's what it is. So this is actually January's. It's called Dusty Cottage. It's gorgeous. It'll be perfect for a sampler or maybe a bird or I don't know, something. It's beautiful. Nice and warm without being too dark. And then my other, this is, this is a weird haul, but um, I bought a half yard of Pictures This Plus Fresco, which I love. It's one of my favorite, I'm, I already said, it's one of my favorite um, neutrals from Picture This Plus. Um, and I had planned on it. So my, my best friend wrote me into a... <laughs> <laughs> roped me in. No, I gladly dove in without even thinking about it um, into starting last minute 
uh, New Year's, not New Year's, leap year sal. A leap year, well, it's just us selling. So a leap year stitch with the idea that it's a, it's a bath, right? A big ass project. And, um, and that you take four years to complete it. So by next leap day, it is done. So there's scheduling and there's planning and I, I didn't have anything that was really large scale like this that I hadn't already started and I kind of wanted, you know, like this is a fun idea. So, and we're not alone in this. Like I know a lot of other people are doing iterations of leap, leap days, stitch alongs and projects and stuff. Um, like some people are doing... Anyways, there are a lot of other things going on out there, which, which are really cool. Um, so this will be fun. It's just her and I, and she's doing, I think she's going to do the Spring at Hawk Run, Hawk Run Hollow, which has 12 blocks. So if she does three a year, I mean, it's super achievable, right? Like three, and those squares, they're dense. Hawk Run Hollows are no joke. I mean, they're usually 100 by 100 square, almost completely folds full coverage stitching. So three blocks plus the upper banner. Um, is that the right math? Yeah, three times four. <laughs> um, it's totally doable over the course of a year, as long as you don't forget that that's, you know, one of your goals for the year. Um, I already have all of the Hawker and Hollows that I own started, and most of them I have adjusted to be smaller. So that didn't really work to just kind of like pick up that whip. And like I said, I wanted to start something new. So I kind of went looking around. I already had one of the anniversaries of the hearts patterns. And so that's, I mean, long story long, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the anniversaries of the heart all on one piece of fabric. And I am going to customize them. Um, to my family's genealogy, which will be really fun. And I, I have not settled completely on, so what I've done, there you can see here, there are two different layouts that I could find. There's the vertical and the horizontal. I'm gonna do the horizontal. I really like the vertical, but for some reason the placement of the houses, I don't know, not that I couldn't change the order that they're in, absolutely could tweak that. But even like in kind of like my mental tweaking, I couldn't really find an order that I I liked. I noticed, here's what it is. I noticed that all of the three tiny houses are all on the same side. <laughs> and it bugged me that it's like big heavy houses here and tiny little houses here. Could that be messed with? Yes, maybe even just a simple flip of the middle house would be enough to balance it out again for me. Little mental quirk here. But um, everything is, it feels really balanced in this one without having to do a bunch of extra tweaking. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna do the horizontal layout. It also takes a little bit less fabric um, I was originally going to do it on this fresco because I love this color and I thought it would be really, really nice. Um, but then I realized that my project would be this big. Minus like three inches. That's a big project. And it would be really comfortable to stitch. It would be beautiful, but it's so big. And so I went digging through my stash naturally after I have bought this. Um, it wasn't even like I hadn't done the math either. It's so silly. I have my charts here of the different layouts, where to put the houses, how big the stitch area will be with all the different counts. Like I was aware of this on some level, but for yesterday when I was sitting down looking at it and trying to start to pull some flosses, um, it just dawned on me how physically large this project would be on that fabric. And I decided, you know, I love it enough that I will use that fabric. I'll cut it up into pieces and use it for, you know, three or four or five projects and it'll be great. 
Um, but I did have, thanks to some stitchy kindness at Christmas time, a piece of 36 count. It's so much darker. That's my only hesitation with this. I still may or may not switch colors. But a 36 count, the full project, with still getting nice margins for framing, is a much more reasonable, it's still a very large project, but it's much more reasonable as far as like picturing this thing on my wall. <laughs> because this is definitely a project I will get professionally framed, or at least I will buy a custom frame for and then frame myself. Um, because I want it up. Um, anyway, so that's, you know, it's much smaller. It's half, it's literally half the size. <laughs> um, so, uh, I, I feel like this is a much better size for me. So now I just have to really decide if I want my background to be this warm and it has a very green cast to it. I don't, oh, there, that actually shows pretty well. That's really pretty good. Um, I have some of the colors, like I'm going to stitch all the words in Tin Bucket and it looks great, but here's some of the blues. It's pretty bright, but that's not necessarily a bad thing for the cream. There's a red. I mean, I think it would be gorgeous. I just have to like tweak my brain into being like, yeah, this is the one and not have this color in my head when I think of it away from the fabric. Anyways, so if all goes according to plan, I will start at the center with Swan Lake and I will tweak these. Um, this one will be our anniversary, my husband and I's anniversary. The funny thing is our last name is Cole. It's already in there. <laughs> How perfect. <laughs> so I'll put our wedding year here and I don't want to do these satin stitches up there. I don't even know what that's really supposed to be. Like it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So I thought what I would do is do D and L, so our first initials, and with a little red heart above it because our red, our wedding colors were like classic, vintage. All of our music was from the 40s, 50s and um, at our reception and my dress was a cream iris, a cream iris, a cream lace and um, my husband wore a, a deep red tie. So it was red, black and cream. It was really, it was really beautiful. <laughs> um, so that'll be kind of a nod to our wedding color there and that'll be fun. Yeah, so I'll start that next Thursday. It's like haul and plans at the same time. And then I haven't decided the order I'll stitch them in yet, but I have started to, where did my papers go? Rut row. <laughs> okay, there. Okay. I have started to, so what I did was I went and I found a picture of each block or most of the blocks, the patterns, and I've started to, you can see my sticky notes, look through my genealogy and try to find people to feature and you can see that there's more they're not definite that's why they're on sticky notes but as I decide what information I'll put onto each block and what changes I'll make to them I will make notes next to the picture of the block um, and do it that way it's been really fun it was a full afternoon of diving into the deep end of our family history um, and a lot of it I knew because my family has been really good about kind of talking about our uh, predecessors as I grew up. But I, my dad's side has been more spotty, a little less explored. And I found out that on my dad's dad's side, we had an ancestor who was a colonel in the militia when in 1776, which is kind of freaking cool. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it'll be fun to really kind of try to get some stories and I'll share them as I do the blocks. So it'll, this will be over the next four years. There are more than 12. I think there are 14. So two of the years I will have to add 
an extra block in and this I'll, I'll do them the first two years while I have the momentum right <laughs> um, and um, and I'll share you know what what tweaks I make and what they mean uh, so why I make the tweaks as we go and you'll get a kind of little a little history of my family I guess which will be fun I think it'll be good I know that uh, pumpkin hollow quilts did something did this basically um in her early videos and her project was gorgeous it was really gorgeous so and i love the idea of kind of revisiting some of those old stories and getting to know you know the people that made me <laughs> so that'll be really fun thank you jill for making me do a leap year project <laughs> it'll be really great um Okay, so the last thing is, the last two things today are my market haul, <clears throat> which you'll see in more detail as I get them because I'll want to share them and I'll want to start them, <laughs> whether they fit the month's theme or not. So these are the six I really settled on. Um, two of them, I believe it's this one and that one are market exclusives and I wasn't sure what that meant if that meant that they'll sell what is at market and then once it's gone it's gone or if they'll be available for you know basically whatever is bought at market and it's not reprinted I don't know how that works but I was a little worried that I wouldn't get them if I waited them on those ones so I, I love them this is tiny modernist love grows here and then heritage sampler the sample oh my goodness heartstring samplery excuse me uh the scenic sampler which is really interesting it's really interesting i don't know why i i like it i really do i mean i bought it so i really like it but it's it's not necessarily a happy i don't know i don't know i don't know my feelings for it are complicated but i'm drawn to it <laughs> If that makes any sense at all. Anyways, I adore this, um, these birds on the tree. It's from JBW. It's called Flights of Fancy. Um, Teresa Kogan. This one captured my heart right away. It's beautiful. It says, a simple life is a peaceful life. And it has these ducks in the water. And, you know, it's just like a little homestead. The dog with the cat on it and the couple holding hands and maybe I'll stitch that on my fresco <laughs> that I have oodles of. I have an abundance of fresco right now. <laughs> I love this little strawberry one from Carriage House Samplings. Uh, it reminded me of one I finished a couple of years ago. It was a strawberry project and it was so delightful to stitch that one. I was like, oh, wouldn't those be cute? Like stitched up and have a little strawberry display during the summer or something and then of course tiny modernist the more i look at this alice in wonderland tree the more i want to stitch it yesterday <laughs> like i want to i want to work on it it's so fun it has so many fun details that a lot of alice charts don't get because i mean without making a big project or smaller motifs you just can't feature a lot of the details of the story but i mean it's got the timepiece and the card soldiers for the Queen of Hearts and anyways it's delightful we'll look at it more when it gets here so you can have a bigger picture but those will be really fun I'm very excited and then my last market haul is the fun one because we're all playing together with this one this is a uh, blue flower praise of the pollinators and we are doing a stitch along, not a casual stitch along. This is like a formal grown up stitch along. <laughs> um, and so I already have it broken up. When we get it started, I will draw all over this picture so that you can see the breakdown of, I, of how we will do this. It will be over nine months. And uh, just to make it really achievable goals, cause like that bat, is a lot of stitching that's pretty dense right um some of these areas will be they'll go really fast because they're a bit more uh, there's a bit more open space 
but some of them have, especially these top parts, have some really dense stitching in the butterfly. Um, but it's so amazing and it's so fun. And the moment I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, I want to stitch that. And I want to stitch it with everybody. <laughs> so that will start April 30th. It's going to be hashtag pollinator Sal. And, and everybody seemed as excited as I was, which was really a thrill. And so this will be really fun. We're putting it out far enough that you can get your pattern shipped to you and you can find your supplies before we start. I worried that starting it at like the end of March, like if there were any shipping delays or you couldn't find quite the right background fabric or whatever, like there wouldn't be enough time to have everybody really start together. So, um, and where this is a more structured, formal stitch along instead of just a let's start it together kind of like I normally do. <laughs> um, yeah, I wanted to give lots of time so that we can, we can really do it. So I guess... I said earlier that I would not be stitching anything but Mira's in May. The exception will be part one of the pollinator cell. <laughs> so there's always an exception to the rule, right? It seems. So that'll be really fun. I hope you'll join me. I'm getting really excited for it. I don't have my background fabric yet, but, um, but I'm window shopping. <laughs> I'm looking. I don't have anything in my stash that is like, perfect and it's got to be perfect so we've got time we've got time this will be really fun um <clears throat> okay so my theme for next month here's my my, my plans and my goals <sighs> themes <sighs> I've kind of thrown themes out the window I mean they're still there but but I kind of went off the rails this month and just stitched um a lot of things that didn't necessarily fit the theme that felt good to stitch. So I have a feeling that that will tend to continue through March, but March is going to be very busy. Second week of March, I'm going to Florida. The third week of March, we have company for a week and that's like most of the month. <laughs> so, so it will be very busy. Um, and we'll just see what how much stitching I get done. I know that I'll take at least one project with me on my trip because there will be downtime, there will be airport time, uh, flight time, <laughs> you know? Um, so I'll definitely find a project for that, but we'll meet again before I go. So I'll let you know, I'll let you know what I'm doing. I'm hoping, so we are going to Disney World. I have never, and Universal Studios. We're gonna spend one day in each park while we're down there visiting my husband's family. And I, I've i never been to any Disney. I've never been to any major theme parks. I've done Silverwood, which if you're familiar with the Pacific Northwest is an Idaho, Northern Idaho theme park. And it's super fun, but like compared to where we're going, it's like, it's like a, merry-go-round in the local park <laughs> like it's so small compared to and I know it's grown over the years but um compared to Disney World Universal Studios Orlando like these are major theme parks so it'll I'm super excited for that that'll be really really fun and then we have we just have a lot of really neat like historic sites and stuff that we're gonna go to along the Florida Atlantic seaboard, if you will. Um, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a really great trip. Um, a really welcome break from reality. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited. And I'll, I'll be sure to share if you guys, I mean, if you guys want to know, it's not cross stitchy related, but <laughs> if you guys want to know, I'm happy to share about that. Um, um, anyways, but what I was going to say is I'm hoping that somewhere in Disney World, they will have like a cross stitch kit or something. Wouldn't that be fun to have a, like a Disney cross stitch project? I know there are like, there are some out there, but licensing is tough with them. And um, I don't, I don't want to just like stitch anything. So I want to find something good, something I'm really excited about, like Belle. <laughs> or Wally, -E. um, anyways, or Toy Story would be really fun. Uh, anyways, 
it'll be really fun. I'm looking forward to it. Even if there's no cross-stitched kit to be found, it'll be really fun. I'm very excited. So, oh, and we get to go to Harry Potter world, <laughs> which I know. Yeah. Anyways, I'm excited. It'll be fun. Um, so that's next month. So the theme for next month is Magical March. That was the original plan. So I do have a couple of starts planned. Um, magical is loosely defined in my world. It's like anything magical. So fairies, unicorns, uh, wizards, dragons, fantasy, basically. It's like, you know, fantasy themed. <laughs> if it fits into that genre, it probably will count as magical for me. Um, frankly, even a leprechaun, if I could find my St. Patrick's Day, like if I do that tier, that, uh, St. Patrick's Day tier, that would count because leprechauns are magical. So, <laughs> um, I'm going to stitch, start, I'm not going to stitch all of this, but I'm going to start this, uh, Barbara Batts fairy that's on the cover here. This is a book. It has six fairies in it, I think, but this is my favorite one. I think she's beautiful and I'm going to stitch her. It's kind of wild, but it's going to be great on this lovely lavender. Um, anyways, I still need to pull floss for her. And I don't know, it'll probably happen, to be all honest, it'll probably happen towards the ends of March that I start this one because it's not ready to go yet. It ha needs some work. And, and then, like I said, it's a busy month. So that will probably happen towards the end of the month. And then my other start is Teresa Wensler's Unicorn, which is fully kitted, I'm pretty sure. Excuse the zipper. Oh yeah. So I've got my fabric, I've got my oodles and oodles of floss. Her projects take a lot of floss, but this will probably be started sometime in the next two weeks before we go to Florida. I'm not gonna take this one to Florida though because this is not the kind of project you do distracted. <laughs> Um, and then I have a number of whips that fit the theme. I've got a couple like fantasy creature sals and um, I, have a, I have oodles of fairies that I could choose from, but I have a couple in particular that I have pulled and we'll just see, we'll just see what feels good. So yeah, <laughs> thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed seeing what's going on in my swirly little crafty brain um i hope you're well and that, <sighs> that your world is happy and i will be back soon i'll be back next week with a uh, quilting bee and then i'll see you for cross stitch sometime before i leave for warmer places anyways take care of my friends happy stitching and I'll see you soon.